Hey there, it's Luis Moran for LC Design, and in today's quick tip, we're going to learn how to use object buffers inside of Redshift. Alright, let's get started. So ever since Maxon bought Redshift, I've been noticing a lot of Cinema 4D users that have never really used any sort of GPU render start to migrate over. And now they're trying to find all these different similarities between the physical and standard render inside of Redshift. And so that's where I come in. I'm here to help you guys out. Okay, so we're inside of Cinema 4D. I have this very simple scene so that you guys can see how object buffers work inside of Redshift. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is on your objects. So make sure you hit Shift C to open up your commander and then apply a Redshift object tag. And here inside of the object ID, you wanna activate it, give it a number higher than zero. And let's go ahead and do that for the rest of them. This one is two and this one is three. Cool, so inside of your render settings, you wanna go here into Redshift and go over to your AOB. Then click on Show AOB Manager and come down to Puzzle Mat. And once you click the Puzzle Mat, you are given a couple of options. You have the option to do Material ID or Object ID. So let's go ahead and drop in our numbers here. And when we look over at our render passes, you'll see that there is now a Puzzle Mat in here. And at first you won't see anything because you can only preview puzzle mats under bucket mode. And so as you can see, your objects are now being displayed with a red, green, or blue color. And so that means that every puzzle mat can hold up to three objects or three different IDs. However, you don't have to do just object IDs. You can actually do this by material. So here inside of your material, there's this output. And if you look at it, it has a material ID. I already went ahead and put a material ID on all of them. And so if I switch this over from object ID to material ID, you will see that they are now being matted out based on which material is on the object. And so by doing this, you can actually mat out parts of an object. Working together, you can have one puzzle mat for your objects and another for your materials. So once you render it out, the way you use it inside of After Effects is pretty simple. As you can see, I have the beauty pass and here is my puzzle mat. You have two options when it comes to using these. You can either use it as a track mat by creating an alpha. And the way you do that is by using this effect. It is called set mat. And here where it says use for mat, you can choose one of the colors. So if you choose red, it will isolate it to that object. You can then set your alpha mat. You now have your object isolated. However, doing it this way requires you to create copies of this puzzle mat. However, you can actually isolate each individual object using a single puzzle mat. So let me go ahead and undo this. I'm gonna delete this set mat, but we're still gonna use it. So I'm gonna put this down underneath where you can't see it. And instead of putting it on the puzzle mat, I'm gonna put it on the beauty pass. And now here in your layers, make sure you select puzzle mat. And now you can select your different channels. And this is really helpful because now you don't have to deal with wrangling all of these track mats. And instead, all you have to do is adjust a single effect on each layer. So here I'm gonna isolate this one as cube. This one is gonna be my platonic and this one is gonna be my Taurus. So if I go to green, I am now on my Taurus. On my platonic, I'm gonna put it on my red. Each one is now isolated, and I don't actually have to deal with track maps. And that is one of the main benefits of using a puzzle mat as opposed to using individual object buffers. And also the fact that you can isolate it based on materials adds an even greater amount of control to your compositing. And that's it. Hopefully I was able to convince you of the power and flexibility of puzzle mats. And before I go, if there's any questions that you have that you might want me to answer in a short, quick tutorial, drop it down in the description. I plan on recording more of these quick tips tutorials to help you answer these technical questions that you may have of your software. I've been Luis Miranda, and I'll see you guys on the next one.